Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. The last video went a little bit long, so this one I'm going to try to keep a little bit shorter. I'm just going to go over the RS-232 connection and how to check it to make sure that one side of it doesn't drop out. We're going to start right from where I left off on part two, so you can go back and watch that video if you want. I'm going to add a text field to both pages. I've placed the text field down in this bottom right hand corner. I've given it a width and a height of 20. I eliminated any text to be displayed because all I want it to do is show a color. And I'm going to set the color to red. So it'll start off assuming that the connection between the Arduino and the Nexion is bad. And if it goes to green, then that means that it's a good connection. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the second page. And I just copy and pasted it. So I'm going to see if it held all the variables. It put it in about the right spot. It looks like it gave it the right background color. It set the text to blank. And it gave it a width and height of 20. I still am learning these displays and it's fun to try different things. So that time I just right clicked on it, hit copy, came over here and hit paste on the other page. And it seemed to work, like I said, it didn't quite put it in the right spot. So I'm going to move it down a little bit. Now that we have these two buttons, we're going to go over to the Arduino. We're going to do this in a fairly simple way and then I'm going to expand on it and make it a little more complicated as the video goes on. In the Arduino code, I'm picking up right from where I left off. So the first thing I want to do is just clean up some things. So if you have the old code, you can follow along and edit as I do and keep everything about the same. So I'm going to delete these commented out lines. And that'll just keep the code a little bit cleaner. Now down here in the asynchronous delay, every five seconds, we're updating N0 and N1. Even if it hasn't changed, we're just overriding it. And the reason I do that in here is if you were to make a change on the Nexion side of things, and it uploads the signal to the Arduino, and let's say the Arduino receive connection is bad, it will overwrite what's on the Nexion. And in that way we can test the connection that's sending data from the Nexion to the Arduino. And now what we're going to add is to test the connection between the Arduino back up to the Nexion. So I've added three lines of code, just a note, and then we're going to set the background color of the Nexion, or of that little box, that T0, to green. 34784 is green and then we have to send those end characters. And since I named it T0 on both pages, I didn't have to make it global. It will always, it will just work because there's a T0 on each page. And then I also have the background connection set to red on the Nexion. So when you first turn on the Nexion or switch pages, it'll always be red. And then within five seconds, depending upon where the Arduino is, it'll update it to green. The upload is complete and you can see that the little box in the right hand corner is green. Now when I switch pages it should start out as red and then shift to green. And it did. And so that way when it's green we know that the Arduino was able to send the command or send a command back to the Nexion. And there, it happened again. The problem is going to be is if, let's say we leave it on this page, page one, forever, and that'll be the main page we look at, and the connection breaks, you know, after it's already been turned green, it'll never go back to red. So that's what we're going to address next. Now on the display, since we're only setting it once, when we initially go to the page, that's why it will never set back to green. Because once the Arduino turns it green, it never goes back. We're going to add a timer to the page, to both pages, that will turn that box to a red every so often, and then the next, or then the Arduino will have to override it back to green. So we have this timer, and the timer, instead of checking T0, 
I'm going to have it check a global variable and that variable will tell the timer what to do or how to set it. And then in the Arduino, the Arduino is all it's going to do instead of changing the color on the button or on the text box, it's going to change that global variable. And you set a global variable up in this program.s. The Arduino or the Nexion has built in system variables already or global variables called sys0, sys1, and sys2 and you can use those at any point. But we're going to add a variable called uartcheck. We're going to initially set it equal to 0 which would be a negative state or that's what we use to define that text box as red. And then each page will reference off of this variable. The nice part about the variable is you don't have to put dot value. You can't use a text variable in this in the program.s page. All you can use is integers. I'm not sure why they make you declare it an integer since all it can be is an integer. But if you try to write text to these, you'd get an error. We're going to leave the timing set to 400 milliseconds on this. So every 400 milliseconds, it's going to execute this code. And it's going to check that variable. And if that UART check is equal to 1, then it's going to make it green. And if it's equal to 0, it's going to leave it red or turn it red if it's green. And then we're going to set that UART check equal to 0. And so that way, the Arduino will have to turn it back to 1. So initially, we'll have it set to 0. And then if the Arduino never sends anything, it will always be 0. And it will keep that block or that T0 background red. Now we're going to do the same thing on page 1. And I tried right-clicking on the timer 0, but it won't let me copy it. So we'll just recreate it over on page 1. I've added my timer. This one we're going to set to 3 seconds, so 3,000 milliseconds. And I'm setting these differently on purpose because the Arduino is going to send or try to change the variable every 5 seconds. And we're going to check it every 3 seconds and reset it every 3 seconds. So we're going to get some um, different results and we'll just see what happens. And then we'll go through and we'll correct that too. Now on the Arduino side of this, what we were doing is we were affecting the background color of that T0. But now what we want to do is we want to set the value of that global variable. So we just have to change one line. So now we're just putting that UART check equal 1. And what's nice is the, the commands are the same whether you're using them in the Arduino or the Nexion. So we don't have to put that dot value, it's just UART check equals 1. And we're on page 1 here, and that was the one we had set for 3 seconds. And you can see that the light is going between green and red. And what's happening is they're out of cycle, so one is set for 3 seconds and one is set for 5 seconds. So every 3 seconds the Nexion is checking, and if, it, if the Arduino hasn't changed the value, it's going to turn it back to red. But if the Arduino has changed the value, it's going to turn it to green you're not going to get an even flash, you're going to get some sort of random pattern, which you might want because that would give you the indication that the, that portion of the Nexion code is working and the Arduino is sending the values up. We'll go to the other page where we had that timer set at 400 milliseconds. And you can see that it flashes, but it'll flash a lot faster because the Nexion is t checking it more often and resetting the value every 400 milliseconds. But this, once again, might be a state you want. You might want that light to flicker to let you know you're getting some feedback. But what we're going to do is we're going to change the asynchronous delay to one second, and then that should fix the problem. And when you go to the page, it'll be red, and then it'll just hold on green, because the Arduino was going to update the variable faster than the Nexion's checking for it. So up here at the top of the code where we set the variable for our delay length, we'll just change this to 1. And now on page 1, since it changes to green right away, it never changes off. So you don't know that it's not working unless it becomes unhooked. So I'm going to change this now, or I'm going to unplug the connection from the Arduino, and you'll see that it will go to red. So it's been unplugged, and you can see that it went to red. So in other words, the connection's been broken between 
And now I've plugged it back in and it went back to green. Now we'll go back to the other page where we have it testing every 4,000 or yeah, 400 milliseconds and you'll see that it's still flashing. And this is because in the next one we have it resetting the variable faster than the Arduino is updating the variable. So you have to decide which way you want it to be. I'm going to unhook it on this page and you'll see that it will go to a solid red. So now it's staying solid red. I'm going to go hook it back up, it'll go back to green flashing. So this is purely just a preference thing. I like the fact that it will stay a solid green and then, because you could unplug it just to test it real quick. So the change I'm going to make for the next video is I'm going to set this to 3000 also. So that way they'll be solid green when they come on. But the other thing that you'll have is when you would go to the page, it's going to be red and then it will change to green once the variable is set by the Arduino. But if you don't want that to happen, you can copy this code here and you can put it on the page itself under this. I like to use the post initialization portion of the code. If you put it in here, what it will do is it's going to check that variable of 1 and it should be set to 1 because the Arduino is continually setting it to 1. And then it will set that text background to green and then the process will start um, and it will always be green unless it becomes unhooked. I'm going to do that for both pages. And then this way going forward, that little box should be green as long as we're connected. So now we're back to the display. I've got it all coded the way that I would like to have it. And we'll just show you that it's still working. It is interesting. It looks like I get a little red flash when I change the page. So there must be a little bit of a glitch. Maybe if I change that code over to the, the other initialization portion of the page, that would fix that. And give that a try here real quick. So we'll go back to the next display. We'll cut this out of here. We'll put it over on this side. We'll go do that on the other page. Okay, so now I have it uploaded. I'll switch the page and we'll see what happens. And it appears that it's working fine now. So I finally have found a case where it matters where you put that, which one of those you use, the pre or the post. And it does make sense because after the page was initialized, that's when you ran that post initialization code and it must already configure the display and set all the background colors. So, kind of interesting. So I'm going to do a quick review. All we did in the next one was we added two text fields and two timers. On the timer we added some code just to check a variable. The variable we put up in this page, this UART check, and if that UART check is equal to 1, it makes the background green. If the UART check is equal to 0, it makes it red. And then we force it to go to red and then that forces the Arduino to update it or change it. On the Arduino we changed our delay length to one second rather than five seconds which helped make that red and green change quicker. But you know it'll also make the temperatures update more frequently and I really didn't pay much attention to that when we were doing the video but I'm assuming that it worked just fine. And then down in the asynchronous delay, all we're doing is we set that UART check equal to 1 every time, every second. So not only now are we updating the N0 and N1 with the values that the Arduino thinks they are, we're also setting the UART check equal to 1. Now in the next video, I'm either going to add 
a second temperature sensor, or I'm going to add the real-time clock. I haven't figured the order that I want to go in. I know I'm going to have to reconfigure that page one so that I can have more data displayed. I'm not sure if I'll put the real-time clock on that page, but I probably will because it would be nice to know the time, especially if you're going to have something set up that will be on your desk. Like for me, it's going to control my heater. So if I have that sitting on my desk, it'll have a little clock with it, and that might be nice. But with that real-time clock, I'm going to do some configuration where I can set a timeout. So if the real if I turn the heater on, let's say, in an hour or two hours, if I forget about it, it'll just automatically turn off. And that might make the video go a little bit longer. So I don't know, I'm, I'm going to think about that, whether I should break that up into two pieces or not. I'd really like to get some comments on if you mind a 20-some minute video over a 12-minute video. Um, information like that is good to have. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.